What's going on peeps and welcome back to The Appeal. In the first episode of this series, I discussed why people love Morgan Wallen, the biggest country star in the scene. Now, he isn't the only country artist making waves and breaking boundaries, an artist that you wouldn't expect to have a top 10 hit and a dedicated fanbase, a more traditional country artist that put out a whole catalog's worth of music last year. The artist I'm talking about today is Zach Bryan, an artist that sounds underground but is very popular. He also has beef with Tick Master. So, how did this former US Navy veteran find success? Why are his songs so damn sad? All of this and more will be explained in this video, The Appeal of Zach Bryan. Zachary Bryan was born on April 2nd, 1996 in Okinawa, Japan, but grew up in Ulaga, Oklahoma. His family had served in the US Navy. In order to continue the family tradition, Bryan entered the army at the age of 17 as an active duty member. During this free time in the army, Bryan has started writing songs just for fun, a passion that ignited when he was just 14. In 2017, he was uploading music to his platforms such as YouTube and SoundCloud. The tunes mostly consisted of just his voice and his guitar. He recorded it inside of a shed behind his house. His friends would record Brian performing the songs on his phone. His heartfelt lyrics and raw emotional performances began to attract attention from fans and fellow musicians alike. His debut album was Deanne, named after his mother who passed away from alcoholism in 2016. It was released on August 24th, 2019 and quickly gained popularity, with fans praising the authenticity and sincerity of his lyrics, as well as his simple, stripped-down style of production. It was written and recorded in about two months, but Brian was cooking up a little something behind the barracks. Heading south. The single would go viral in 2020, not crossing over to country radio, but still managing to go platinum. He would follow it up with a second album, Elizabeth, on May 8th, 2020. It was written about his then-wife, Rose, inside of a barn near his home in Washington. By 2021, Brian had enough buzz for his raw, authentic style that he was booked for the Grand Ole Upfree, a weekly country music concert that celebrates the genre and allows famous singers to perform. It's the longest running radio broadcast in United States history said to have made country music famous. His performance on the station got the attention of Warner Records. They would come to a deal to release his music. He went on a nationwide tour in the fall, Ain't For Tamin. But before this, he received life-changing news from the army. They had discharged him to pursue music full time. Brian's response was, if it was my decision, I would never get out of the world's greatest navy, but here I am. And and they kindly, honorably discharged me to go play some music. With all this momentum, 2022 was set to be a breakout year for Brian. And it sure was. He announced his major label debut, American Heartbreak, and following in Morgan Wallen's footsteps, maybe, it was a triple album of 34 tracks. He would rule out the record with singles from Austin, Highway Boys, and Something in the Orange. The latter became his first Hot 100 entry, a crossover between rock and country. It would end up peaking at number 10, which for a country song is pretty impressive, especially for something this traditional additional, accomplishing this feat with barely any country radio airplay. It has sold 4 million copies in the US thus far, but the album debuted at number 5 in the states, selling 70k first week. If you thought he was done putting out music, nope, here's a summertime EP which might just be his best work to date. Since then, he's been putting out singlets like Burn 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 and Dawns, possibly gearing up for another album. At this point, his fans have been fed enough and now they're just gonna let him cook. With 14 million monthly listeners to his name, it's best to wait for what good he'll do. Now let's get more in depth. And it was my mistake, she never said a thing about the first thing I want to go over that is particularly charming about him is his voice. This is due to the fact that he uses absolutely no autotune for what I can tell. Maybe a little pitch correction? Every vocal from this man is from the heart and soul, which is why so many people appreciate him. It's a completely raw experience vocally. He's got himself a fairly raspy voice that cuts through the heartstrings as he sings about the saddest details of his life. It completely works for the mix of folk and country that he is going for 
for in his art. Going through his back catalog to his first album, it was inspiring to see such a progression from 2019 to 2022. Back then, his voice was still developing and was a bit off key, but now he's much more confident in hitting those notes effortlessly. It might help that in the beginning, he had basic equipment in terms of like recording music compared to the connections of the industry he has now. He can now book studio time instead of vocalizing in his shed. It's a pure evolution and I can't see any fans complaining. I'm moving at God speed. Only God and my mom. Another connection he has with his audience is his backstory. I did go over it in the brief history section, but there are a few points to take from his story that greatly impact his appeal. Firstly, the fact that he was a US Navy veteran. Country fans love and appreciate a man who has served for our country. It is unknown how close he could have been to death. All that is known is that he was a part of it for eight years. He apparently ran with some top dogs, encountered a few fights, got to drink with some of his good old friends, and mostly important, became a man. He didn't leave the army on his own. The Navy themselves cut him loose to continue his music career. If that isn't a sign from God you're gonna be successful, I don't know what is. Knowing that he was messing around with his guitar during break time, singing to an iPhone in a barn, and accidentally making this music stuff a thing? It's an inspiring backstory which is where the appreciation for Zach Bryan comes from. He himself would have chosen to stay in the Navy, but I guess God had other plans. Upon surfing through his discography, I got the feeling that listening to Zach Bryan is like hanging around the fire at night with friends. You're discussing your life at the moment, good or sad, and the only thing you have between you is a guitar. Which is funny, because that's literally what the viral performance of Heading South looks like. Just a dude performing a song in the pitch dark. I find this to be part of his appeal due to relatability. There's nothing better than a Friday night campfire with the boys or girls. Loom from Elizabeth literally sounds like it was recorded around a fire with that crackling. A lot of his earlier material has that vibe due to how simplistic it all feels. His use of social media to promote his to be released songs was a smart tactic to get the fans riled up. We've seen similar musicians use this tactic before like Bailey Zimmerman. He also interacts with his fans a lot, making the dude seem more down to earth. I miss the way you followed when you jaywalked in the street. I've mentioned the word raw several times when it comes to describing Brian's material. It all goes back to his origins recording inside of a barn. Once you start that way, you kinda can't let go of that sound. On his first album, Deanne, all 10 tracks comprise of his voice and a guitar. That's it. You can tell it's not properly mixed and mastered inside of a studio. This makes the focus of the entire album to be the heartfelt lyrics because you know it's going to be the same sound every time. But it also introduces the artist that that is Zach Bryan in the rawest form possible. The acoustic sounds resonate with the audience who don't want to focus on too much other than the lyrics. It's all about telling a story about his happiest and saddest moments. This continues on the second record, Elizabeth, where most of his tracks are just him with the occasional backing vocals on A Boy Like You. However, the instrumentation picks up slightly. There is a guitar, of course, but I'm hearing hints of strings and pianos in there as well. The lyrical content's pretty similar, don't expect that to change, it's just an upgrade in sound. Something I noticed listening to this record is two songs, Elizabeth and Anita, being missing from the original release. He addressed this by saying that he had matured and grown older since the release of these songs. He claimed that they weren't his stories to tell anymore. Both songs being about old flames may be the reason you take this down. Anita possibly being about an ex who overdosed and Elizabeth obviously now being his ex-wife. The situations clearly gave him a lot of pain and he almost wishes he didn't put something so personal out there. His material in 2022 American Heartbreak and Summertime Blues sees a massive boost in production now that he is under a major label. His voice is better, his songwriting is just as sad, but we start hearing banjos, drums, harps, electric guitars, pedal steel, bass, and more. Despite all these changes in production, the sound, while not nearly as raw, still feels like the Zach Bryan from Deanne just doesn't use autotune and his lyrics are still the same style old fans are used to. And let's be honest, he probably wouldn't be nearly as famous if he stuck to the same production style. Just saying. I've been living, waiting on the day.
It's no secret that the organic country sound has been seeing a revival. Artists like Luke Combs and Eric Church have repopularized the traditional country style, distancing from the bro country boom in the mid 2010s. Even the newer country stars like Lainey Wilson and Bailey Zimmerman are leading charge with a conventional sound. Some may call it boyfriend country. I wouldn't call Zach Bryan that exactly. While yes, there are a few songs about love, like every musician ever, there are deeper truths lyrically. Bryan's music is organic in a way. I've discussed before, with the lack of autotune, use of traditional guitars and drums, staying clear of anything trap or pop, and the lyrics about heartbreak that you'd expect from a 90s country artist. It also helps that he writes all of his music, most of his songs are pretty depressing, making his happier songs stand out. But then again, sometimes even his happy songs can sound a bit depressing, and I think he knows that. With the general public being starved for a story, Brian is the perfect artist that anyone can run to, even if they don't like country that much. I dare to compare him to Taylor Swift in a way. Both tell memorable stories with complex lyricism. Oh yeah, and they also have beef with Ticketmaster. All I'm saying is that a collaboration is more possible than you think. Well, and you... A lot of his music are thoughts boys and men alike have, but don't keep to themselves because we're taught to keep that inside and show no emotion and we can't relate to what he says in his music. He can articulate thoughts that I've had for a long time without knowing how to say them. For instance, longing for my future girlfriend or wife without knowing who they are. Zach says, how does a man get so homesick for a face he's never seen? His music is very raw and acoustic. He writes all of his songs, which is unusual nowadays. The the average number of songwriters on a country song is 2.9, but with Zach, his is 1. He displays his flaws for everyone to see, saying that he's the worst of his kind. We see the good, the bad, and the ugly with him whereas other artists try to act like they're perfect. I think people like his music because singing his songs like Come As You Are makes you feel accepted. The relatability of his lyrics, how they say what I'm thinking and what I want to say, even if I didn't realize I was thinking it. As someone who plays the guitar but not super well, his music is a piece of art. Fairly simple chords put together with beautiful writing makes it great learning his songs from my perspective. He's also got songs about so many different topics and different perspectives. It's hard to go about his songs and not find one that you connect to on a truly personal level. He seems like a real humble, heartfelt man, salt of the earth type. His songwriting is some of the best I've heard. Relatable deep lyrics, songs for every mood. He seems to enjoy life in moments, big and small, passionate. He's honestly a rare gem in my opinion, but seeing his fanbase grow like it is, is comforting in knowing there's so many people that align themselves with him. As I stated with Morgan Wallen, there is a section of music listeners who just don't like the style of country. Even with Brian's music being more traditional, they likely would dismiss it as boring and uninteresting to them. Some people don't like being sad and want something more uplifting. There are also critics of the man's voice who don't enjoy the raspy rawness of it all. They prefer something more clean and tuned. It just shows that you can be a natural singer without any processing, but still have critics. I still think Brian has the time to improve. His career is just getting started. Thank you for watching this video. I hope you liked it and I understand why people enjoy Zach Bryan so much. I admit, it wasn't hard to find reasons, but I know there are people out there that wonder how this man got so far. If you have any recommendations of who I should cover next, let me know and I'll see you all in the next episode. Peace. To you, I'm just a man. To me, you're all I am. Where the hell am I supposed to go?